Well, hello out there. Welcome to this week's edition of Friday Night Fever. I'm Jim Holder. You know this guy. You love him. Andy Lee. Yeah, I hope you do, at least. I think they do. I think everybody does. Thank you so much for joining us on this Labor Day weekend. Yes. But uh, we're... You're sweating, my man. It's uh, lots of yeah. labor, lots of laboring tonight. It was one of those, it was one of those nights. I'm just glad the rain held off. We used to say, "Blame John." Thanks, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Thanks, Joel. Yes, it's all. It's nice all, work. Yes, we, we give Joel Young all the credit. No, yes. week we, we three of the high school football season. Starting to find out how, how teams are. Sure. You know, these matchups might kind of determine how their seasons could go. As a matter of fact. Yeah, you kind of. You, if you haven't established an identity by now, you probably don't have one, and you can tell the teams that are starting to establish an identity, the ones that are going to go far in the playoffs. Yeah. We shall see. We've got a lot of exciting highlights tonight. By the way, scores on our tickers always. They're still coming in. You saw uh, Tupelo. They've had a lot of injuries. They continue tonight, but they got what the win over What a win they had tonight. Six nothing. They're now 3-0 and on the season. Lots of excellent matchups. We begin with our busy lad game of the week. It is Nettleton at Boonville, and here we go. Of course, you know the story with Nettleton. Uh, had to give up a point so far this year. Head coach Mike Maddox of uh, Boonville out. He's been sick. Kyle Bond taking his place for now. Uh, Nettleton starting off. Graham Gardner giving it to Cortez Doss. He's had a nice year so far, and this is a nice play for 25 yards and a first down. Nettleton will go for it on fourth down, and Doss tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Ryland Tanner. So Boonville is going to take over. So the Blue Devils on offense, and they're fired up. John Deaton here given to Austin Williams. And he will get a 10-yard gain. And then Deaton, you know, a guy we've talked about a good bit, Dallas Gamble. Here's Deaton finding Dallas Gamble. Always and, a safe bet. Yep, and he gets the touchdown 10 yards out. Boonville with the early lead. And Boonville will hand Hamilton or hand Nettleton its first loss of the year. 31-7, Blue Devils now 3-0. The A game, Amory at Aberdeen. The Bulldogs seeking its 10th straight victory in this series. Fred Fields. Brandon Willard, there he runs for a uh, first down. And then Fields, just a little bit later, one of the best passers in the area, finds Brandon Williams for a first down. So Aberdeen in business on its opening drive. But a couple plays later, Fred, F Fred Fields drops back. He rolls to his right, kind of heaves one up. It's picked off by Amory's James Spratt. So the Panthers. Get the turnover on Aberdeen's opening possession. Here's Hunter Jones to Darius Smith. Smith will pick up a first down, but look at this hard hitting, man. This is, ooh, you ouch. think these, these teams don't want it bad? And then Jones to Trendon Gillen for a touchdown, and the streak is over. Amory wins the A game 34 26. Big win for Amory on the road at that. All right, West Lounds at Biggersville. Lions are 2 0 coming into this one. You think you can beat us? Now that's fantasy football, is what they say. Huh. And Lions, well, they're rolling so far. West Lions, though, with the ball first. Melvin Crawford looking and finding for Darius McGee, but there's a fumble on the play, and Bryson Pollard getting in there and recovering for the Biggersville Lions. So, cheerleaders are excited, and the Lions do not waste any time because Quentin Knight looking for Lamon Davis. He is just wide open. The coach on the sideline said that's a touchdown before he even caught it. Yes, that is a, indeed a touchdown. A Lane Kiffin call. Yes, made it 6 nothing. And while the band is still playing, the Lions are going to go for two because why not? Knight is going to run it in. And Knight and the Lions had a good night. They're up 8 nothing at this point in Biggersville. Goes to 3 0. They win it 49 to 16. New Hope at Houston. Ty Hart and Hilltoppers coach tell me it got a lot cooler when the sun went down, but the action <laughs> stayed hot on the field. New Hope down 21 7 late in the second quarter. First down run from Braylon Miller. The Trojans would have to punt it away. Houston would go three and out on its ensuing possession, but special teams love highlighting the special teams. Kevin Diaz with that rugby style punt, hard to handle. New Hope guy muffs it. It's recovered by Zach Boren, and right before the half, Houston is in big time business. And they would cash in the turnover with a Bobby Townsend touchdown run. Houston rolls tonight. 47-14. Hilltoppers having a good year so far. How about two teams that are 2-0? and South Pontotoc at East Union. The Cougars were up 21-6 at halftime. Third quarter, Brett Riley, how big is he? He just makes catches like this all the time. Go down the sideline. He was ruled out, but South Pontotoc has a first down. Speaking of guys that are important to their teams, well, guess who? Fast Eddie Ivey. Eddie Ivey, and here he is making some moves. Bring little tackles here, back and forth, down the sideline. There he goes. That's his third touchdown of the night. And South Pontotoc extends its lead to 28 to 6. Urchins will not go away. Ty Walton to Micah Ellis, who takes a big hit, but he's got a first down, a little roughing on the play. So they get some yardage out of that. Next play, though, Walton 
Running the little option there, but he's stripped of the ball by Barrett Griggs. And guess what? Griggs is going the other way for a score. And just like that, South Pontotoc keeps the momentum. They extend their lead to 35-6. And South Pontotoc, they are now 3-0, 49-26, the final over East Union. North Pontotoc at Oklahoma. I was told all the craziness happened before I came, of course, but you can't be everywhere at once. No. We'll pick this one up. We'll have to clone you. At, at 21 early in the fourth. That's Corley Hooper for the first down run for the Vikings. And then Hooper calls his own number again. It's a good call. It's a first down run into Chieftain territory. Just a couple plays later, TJ Polk, big time run up the middle, bounces left and into the red zone. But on third and one, Jalen McFarland of Oklahoma comes up with a huge stop in the backfield. North Pontotoc elects to go for the field goal. They would miss it, but they'd eventually score the game-winning touchdown. North Pontotoc escapes Oklahoma with a 28-21 victory. South Pontotoc and North Pontotoc next week. It'll be exciting. All right. West Point at Starful. I think this is a fairly big game, Andy, wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah. I'd say so. Number one and number two in the state. Starful number one in 6A. West Point number one in 5A. Special teams, Andy. Huge punt by the Jackets. Can't Pins ignore them. Yeah. Can't ignore them. Green Wave pinned inside their 13-yard line. So, Rodriguez Clark here going to take the direct snap for Starkville. This is later in the game. Tries to sneak it in. Golden Wave defense, though, holding strong. What would you expect? Then on the next play, here's Clark trying it again. He will barely sneak it over. But he puts the Jackets on the board. It counts. And Starkville's got the early lead in this one. How about another punt, Andy? Oh, Wave great. Wave here. Oh. Way in here and watch what happens. Fumbled, and West Point, or well, there was a recovery there. Under a minute to go in the first half. Brandon Harris of West Point taking the carry, sneaks his way, helps steal some momentum. Way was up seven to six at halftime, but Starful ending West Point streak. Starful getting the win, 23 to seven, is that final. WTVA is Evan Hensley. He's seen a lot of these Mr. teams. Mr. Yes, and Mr. <laughs> and West, Mr. Point. West Point. He's seen both these teams a couple of times sure in has. the first three weeks. He uh, covered tonight's game. He joins us with more. And we had a very competitive game out here today, but it was Starkville in the end with a 23-7 win over the West Point Green Wave. And for Starkville, it was all about the defense, particularly the defensive line that really shut down the Green Wave's rushing attack. And at halftime, it looked like West Point might have an edge with the momentum on their side with a late score in the second quarter to take a 7-6 lead. But it was all Starkville from there on out in the second half as they shut out the Green Wave in the second half of this game. And coming up next week, Starkville will travel to Columbus, and then West Point will look to rebound after this loss in a host game against Knoxville County. For now, reporting out in Starkville, Evan Hensley, WTVA 9 News. All right, Evan, thank you so much. It's just me. It seems like every week, West Point and Starkville in some big rivalry. Starkville has Columbus next week, which they should win. win nothing. Yeah. And, and, and then West Point is Knox. It seems like every week there's some yeah. big, big matchup that they can't. You know, you get this big game, and now you got to turn around and play big games They're like that. They're all big games. Yes. Well, they are all a big <laughs> game. You want to win all of them. Uh, speaking of winning and speaking of contests and those sorts of things, you know, Andy, I say this every week, we have an Instagram contest. Yes, we do. For Band and Cheerleaders of the Week. We had great participation this week. We had about, I think, over 2,500 people participating total uh, on Instagram. You go there, you like between the two schools we have for Game of the Week. It was between Nettleton and Boonville. Boonville led for a good part of it, but in the end, it was Nettleton winning. So Nettleton wins Band and Cheerleaders of the Week. So we're going to hear when we come back from the Nettleton Band. But right now, the Nettleton Cheerleaders will take us to the break. Hi, we're Nettleton Cheer, and you're watching Friday Night Fever on the
da, 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 da. The marching band from Tigerland, yeah, that's right. bringing us back. That's right. Our band of the week from Nettleton. Guys, thank you so much. Welcome back to Friday Night Fever. Jim Holder, Andy Lee scores on our ticker. As, of course, you saw Westlands, Biggersville, those highlights earlier. We're going to continue with highlights now. Andy. Kossuth at Baldwin. You see the score. The home team up 19-14 when we pick it up in the second quarter. This is Kossuth quarterback Matthew Bobo handing off to Koto Wilhelp for a 10-yard gain. First down, Aggies. Bobo then gives to Kenner Mills, who gets it under control. Takes it 25 yards to the house. Aggies extra point good there on top, 21-19. Now Baldwin Bearcats quarterback Maddox Ritchie will be sacked by Allen Rinqua for a five-yard loss. Now Ritchie then passes out to Jordan Eldridge, but Dakota Wilhelm picks it off for the pick six. Kasuth able to roll in the second half. They win this one 55-19. All right, Ripley at Calhoun City. Here we go, and uh, Tigers and Wildcats. It was a cat fight, Andy. Yes. Here's Ripley with the football early, but Kellen City with the interception. Jadarius Hill, Jadarius Hill with there with the turnover. He's, Hill has been all over our highlights pretty much every week for Kellen City. Anthony Campbell here taking the snap. Campbell with a big gain. And then Campbell, the, the uh, Wildcats happy about that because he's going to score a touchdown. Six nothing Wildcats at that point. And. Ripley, though, comes back. These Tigers get the win on the road, 7-6. to six. All right, Smithful hosting East Webster coming out of the TP. Yes. Walking out of the TP. Some teams like to, oh, uh, there they go, picking up the pace. Or the Seminoles as Michael Campbell looks on. Eagle, uh, Wolverine strike first. This is a uh, touchdown for East Webster. Get them on the board. And Wolverines were looking for the first win of the year, too. Yes, they the are. Smithville cheerleader trying to fire up the offense. Uh, Smithville would uh, throw an interception. And in the end, uh, East Webster gets that first win, 28-14. Not easy to get that win in the swamp, but indeed they do. Okay, New Albany at Pontotoc. All right, let's get fired up, everybody, because it's a big rivalry matchup. And Pontotoc was down early in this one. You won't be an early lead, but the Warriors stepping up here on defense. In fact, Logan Bowen looking for somebody, but he's going to be sacked. The Warriors can do that to you. Uh, Pontotoc taking over on offense a little bit later on here in the hollow. And here's Carter, Justin Colton. Ray Vaughn, wide open. Right. You, can't, you can't get any more wide open than that. Makes it 36 to 7, Warriors. And uh, Pontotoc. Three games are at home to start the season. They'll go on the road next week, 43-14. Pontotoc, they're now 3 0 on the season. All right, Itawamba AHS at home taking on South Tillo. Indians looking to go 3 0 on the season. 7 0 in the second quarter. South Tillo will fumble it, and the Indians recover. But just a few players, plays later, South Tillo will punch it in for a uh, score to tie the game up at 7. I promise. That's what it says on my shot sheet, but I hope you enjoyed that shot of the cheerleaders. And here's the play where Saltillo ties it up, and Saltillo goes on to get the win, 20 to 19. Or excuse me, hit a Wamba HS. Edge of Saltillo, 20 to 19. Very tight game. All right, time now for the social media center. Daniela Orpesa off tonight. Shante Sumter is in. Shante joins us now to show us what's happening tonight in social media. And thanks, guys. Excited to be here and excited for another night of high school football. Tons of cheerleaders are representing for their squads tonight. First, we're going on a trip to Hawaii. Aloha, Boonville. Boonville cheerleaders are bringing out the lays tonight. Well, brought out the lays because that's over for Aloha night. And of course, that was our game of the week, so we can't forget about Nettleton. Here's their dance squad. And check out these lovely young ladies from Tupelo Christian Preparatory School. Now on to the fans. And from the looks of the pictures we received, they were pumped for the big games tonight. Taylor Crawley may be the smallest and cutest Green Wave cheerleader. She was ready to see how West Point faced up against Starkville didn't work out so well, but check out these cousins who say they are the future Nettleton cheerleaders. Looking good, Hazlyn and Tessa Lee. Can I join your squad? And here's Dakira and Deja Ivy with their friend cheering on the Hilltoppers tonight. And of course, we can't forget about the parents. Here's some moms supporting the Hilltoppers as well. And fans from Nettleton. 
Aberdeen cheering on on cheering on Aberdeen, excuse me, as they take on Amory tonight. And now we'll head to Calhoun County. These fans were cheering on the Wildcats tonight. And last but not least, check out Sarah Jane, Carol, and Addison having a good time cheering on TCPS. And now Addison has me craving Italian ice. Remember, don't forget to tag us and use the hashtag WTVAFNF in your photos and videos to be featured each week. Back to you guys. Right, Shante, thank you so much. How much craving Italian ice as well? We I, all. I could use some Italian ice. I got the Albert Brooks yes. flop slip from Broadcast <laughs> News going, but just been working hard, right? Exactly, exactly. Working hard for a living. Friday Night Fever, Jim Holder, Andy Lee. Let's get back to the highlights. Alcorn Central at Thrasher. And the Rebels, this is their first game of the season. Had some scheduling quirks, but here's game one for the Rebels. And well, we talked to this guy in the preseason, Sean Dalton Weatherby. And great Thrasher, baseball player, too. Yeah, yes, and great power lifter. 12 0 Thrasher Athlete. in the first quarter. Gets that first down, Thrasher fans loving that. And then how about some more Weatherby? Weatherby coming near, I had to run off from this because if he was going to run me over, <laughs> yeah. I'd yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it would be, so it was 12 nothing after the first quarter. This drive continued into the second quarter. His line gave him some great blocking. Here's Weatherby scoring a touchdown that made it 18 nothing. Thrasher goes on to win this one by the final of 46 to 24. The Battle of Highway 371, it's Mantachi at Morville. Halftime here. Let's pick it up early in the third quarter. The Troopers strike first. Uh, Colby Gasaway takes a pitch, and they're not going to get him. 67 no. yards to the house, and Morville scores there. The Trooper cheerleaders love that. A next series for Morville, Dawson Phillips to Donovan Caldwell for the touchdown. And in the end, Morville wins this one 36-6. All right, here we go. TCPS. Hosting Macon Road Baptist. Macon Road Baptist coming all the way down from Memphis to face the Eagles. And when Kayla Thompson shooting this one, she gets Macon Road Baptist scoring here early on. She, said, she goes, I missed it. But I said, no, no, no. They're the opposing team. They're out of the area. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah. here's, uh, here's TCPS Eagles running the football and answering real quick. Kai Holiday here back to throw. Uh, Foster Yates a big night. Holiday and Yates hooked up several times, including on this touchdown. And a little bit later on. Well, Holiday and Yates would hook up once again. Actually, this is a TCPS on defense. I'm foreshadowing a little bit, Andy. We do that from time to sure time. Do. And a uh, cute little girl there. And now, Yates again scoring the touchdown. TCPS getting the win, 52-36. A shootout there. Uh, Indianola Academy taking on Starkville Academy. After throwing a pick six on the first throw of the game, quarterback Garrett Lewis Drops back and connects with his wide out Howell Archer for a big first down. A few plays later, senior Taylor Arnold, call Arnold, gets the carry and is met by a group of colonels. And in the end, the winner of this one would be Starkville Academy, getting that 2014 win over Indianola Academy. Big top five matchup. Real quick from Thursday night, Choctaw Central, Choctaw County. This is all Chargers. Opening drive, and Andy, you saw this. You shot this. It's I did shoot round. this. Yes, Wide the receiver, Team Ashford. 50 yards to the house, the Bolts, the Chargers, the bolts. an early 7 to nothing lead. Uh, Choctaw County defense was suffocating as well. Tyler Holman wrapping up Choctaw Central quarterback Gerald Isom for a loss. Ensuing Chargers possession, Tylen Carter spinning, rolling right, floating one out to Justin Jenkins. He'll race 42 yards for a score. Chargers up 13 nothing. They win 64-14. Choctaw County now 2-1 and one on the year. That'll do it for this week's edition of Friday Night Fever. Coming up shortly on WLOV, Friday Night Fever on Fox. Hope you stick around for again. that. For Andy Lee and our staff, I'm Jim Holder. Have a great night. Take care.